Hello, uh, we're taking a look today at how to speed up Photoshop processing of very large files uh, and also to save disk space. Um, the technique has undoubtedly been around for a while. Um, I've recently been pointed out that West Coast Images has a blog post on it. Um, hopefully I'll be able to add a little bit to this in the process of showing and if you read the article we've also got some details on how much space layers and curves actually take up. Um, the first thing to look at is here is an image that I've scanned in I've downsized it a little bit to make it more representative of a high-res high DSLR file and I'll uh, make a... Uh, actually I won't make a quick crop of it. The first thing I'll do is show you a technique that's available in Photoshop for non-destructive cropping. Um, so I've made my scan and I'd like to make a, a quick crop of it but I might want to make a more accurate crop later or maybe I want to get rid of this uh, mark from my graphmatic dark slide. So I'll, I'll look at a, a quick crop that lets me get a picture out for use online maybe. Um, but if we look up in the left hand corner in the status bar uh, we can see that we have an option called the cropped area and one option is to delete it and the other option is to hide it. Now the great thing about hiding it, if I apply that crop, is that if I then wanted to go back in and crop the file again, I do something that's very strange. I can actually take that crop out and expand it. And apply the crop again. And my missing areas are returned. So we'll leave the crop as it is for now. That's just a, a bit of a sideline. Um, the technique here is to save my original master file um, and I'll make a save of this into a temporary folder. Um, I'll put it into my documents folder, I'll find my incoming folder. Um, scan master, let's call this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize the image and I'm going to resize it down by um, down to let's say 25% of its original size. Now this is more than enough to see on screen still. And now I can go ahead and perhaps add some curves, brighten the image up slightly. I might want to um, add some vignetting so I can darken the layer, invert the mask and then brush that darkening layer back in. So let's just take a look at doing this quickly. If I brush in white and change the opacity up a little bit. There we go, we're actually getting somewhere. That's a very rough vignette. And let's imagine I've, I've done a few of these, so I might do a little bit of selective colour as well. So I might go in and say that I want my reds to have a little less magenta in them. Um, and now I can save this again, and this is my Scan Master Edits resized. Now because this image has been uh, a quarter in fact it's a sixteenth of the original file size. I never run out of memory, every operation is very fast and if I look at the size on disk of this and I bring the incoming folder in I can see that my original scan master was 156 megabytes but my edits with all of the layers is only 11 megabytes. So that's made everything faster. My goal now is to um, go and make a master print again. So I open my edits resized file. I then increase the size of it by 400%. So I now got a very large file. And I go and open my 
master. So if I look at the bottom layer of my um, edits file, you can see it's, it's very blurred and that's because it's been downsized and obviously my scan master file is very sharp. What I can do now is I can right click on my scan master file and go to duplicate layer. And one of the tricks with duplicate layer is you can target the layer to duplicate it to and you can put it onto my edits file. And what that has done is it's created a new layer on the edits file with my high res image with all of my resized curve adjustments below. So there was my original, uh, if I zoom up to 200% you can see this was fairly blurry. Uh, and I duplicated the master file over it to give me a high res file. So now I'm back to a master file I can print with, I can flatten this and save it as a 100% uh, JPEG to try and reduce file sizes. Um, but I, I can also have multiple duplicates of this file if I like. So if I was printing it to different sources, I could have the smaller versions and then go to the uh, go back to the larger version as soon as I want to print. And, and this technique makes working with very large images quite pain-free. I make some scans that are around two gigabytes. I've made a couple of scans that are around four gigabytes before now, and I've also done some panorama from panoramas from digital files that have ended up in the 500 meg, 700 meg, meg mark. The IQ180, for instance, uh, the native file size for their 16-bit full files is 500 megabytes, which is about the same size as my uh, 2000 DPI 4.5 scans. So we're, we're getting to an it era where these file sizes will become more commonplace. I'm sure that the file sizes of the Nikon D800 will be in the 300 megabyte mark and then if you start adding layers to that you could very easily hit half a gig or more. So I hope this has helped you. Uh, I'm going to be making another video next which will show you a technique for uh, a, sh a type of shadow highlight recovery that uh, you can do non-destructively in layers. Uh, and until then Bye-bye.